Hello and welcome back to Small Corner of a Foreign Field and we're talking to you today from the Yorkshire Air Museum at Elvington in North Yorkshire. In particular, I'm talking to you from their magnificent C-47 Dakota that they have parked out in the airfield. Now, the Dakota during the war had many uses as a transport aircraft. One of its major uses was was taking paratroopers into Normandy for D-Day and that's one of the things I'm going to be talking about today. A little piece of paratrooper equipment, particularly this 1940s children's toy that I've got right here. And this is a 1940s children's toy called a cricket. It does this. Brilliant, don't you think? And you might be asking yourself why are we going in with a children's toy? Well, let me tell you. This particular gadget is used because when we go into Normandy, it is dark at two o'clock in the morning on the 6th of June 1944, even in France. And therefore, if I'm seeing somebody or hearing somebody rustling around in the bushes, I'm, they could be German, they could be British, they could be, if I've gone particularly out of the way, French, American, Canadian, who knows? And I'm gonna need a method of determining friend from foe. Because I can't just shout, is that you, Bill? Because if it's not Bill and it turns out to be Jerry, I'm gonna be in a world of trouble. So we'd use this little clicker thing here in order to give out these recognition codes. So if I can hear somebody shouts crawling along in the bushes, I would click once and hopefully, coming back, I would get two clicks in response. Now that's a fairly easy code to break. So we have a system of recognition codes that goes along with it as well. So I would click once, get the two clicks back, and then I would shout punch and hopefully get the response Judy. Or later on, after they change the codes, going each day through D-Day, or maybe on D-Day plus four, and be shouting bed and getting the word breakfast back. And that would, the final greeting on that would be the word welcome, because it was felt that Germans couldn't pronounce the word welcome. They would say welcome instead. And if they'd infiltrated your unit, that was apparently a way that you could catch them out. Now, whether or not that's actually the case, I don't think any of us will ever know anymore, but that's certainly what was put into the briefings and the reason why it was there. Now, a particularly amusing story that we have about the cricket uh, comes from a Sergeant Len Price, who was a Yorkshireman like myself. He's from Huddersfield. And he was part of the 7th Battalion of the Parachute Regiment who jumped out of one of these on D-Day. Their job was to rescue the Ox and Bucks Light Infantry from Pegasus Bridge if that operation all went wrong. So they will be lining up, 22 of them, in this aircraft at the junk door at the back, ready to go, wearing 12 to 15 stone of paratrooper equipment and each carrying a canoe as well as they exited the aircraft. As they jump out, eight seconds later they hit the ground and they're in the war. Now fortunately by the time that they'd landed, Pegasus Bridge was in Allied hands, they didn't need rescuing so 7 Para could ditch the canoes. And they did. Now as Len is walking along, through the Bacage undergrowth of Normandy, he hears, as is predicted, somebody rustling in the bushes. So he clicked his cricket. Nothing happened in response. So going against his training, he clicked his cricket a second time. Still no response. He picked up and cocked his rifle, getting ready for the first active service that he'd seen in the 23 years of his life so far. And then he gave his cricket a nervous third click. Whereupon a loud Scottish voice came out of the undergrowth and said, if you don't stop that bloody clicking, I'll blow your bloody head off. Turned out to be his platoon sergeant, and he noted that as his first friendly voice that he heard in Normandy. Now, I'll have a great many other stories coming for you in a few weeks, um, and we will have, do some other things in the future at the Elvington Air Museum. It really is a fantastic place. So come and join us, see their, ha see their magnificent Halifax bomber, and we will be back to you in later weeks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, from me and the cricket, good night.